This is Marta from Ruby Soup with Pearl's Juice. And today I am bringing you my October book haul. So, let's get started. First up, I bought Maggie Nelson's Bluets. This is a poetry collection. Uh, Maggie Nelson is the author of the very much acclaimed uh, memoir, uh, The Argonauts. Uh, she has written memoirs and essay collections like theory, and she's known as being very theoretical, uh, but she's also kind of like very much appreciated as a poet. And a lot of people say that this collection is really good. And uh, yeah, it looks promising. I have just kind of looked at it a little bit. And so far, I have to say I really like this quote here. I don't go to the movies anymore. Please don't try to convince me. When something ceases to bring you pleasure, you cannot talk the pleasure back into it. All right. And I have also bought the first, the first and second volume of Death Note. Uh, me and my boyfriend uh, just finished binge watching the three seasons of the Death Note anime. And my boyfriend, he is utterly obsessed with Death Note now. So much so that he was just on the internet trying to find all these people with all their crazy theories about what does this and that mean in Death Note. So I went to a bookstore and I bought him the first and the second volume in the manga. Uh, so it will be interesting to see if the manga is as good or even maybe it's even better than the enemy. But uh, yeah, we'll get back to that. I have also purchased a uh, novel called En Broki Band Runt Rienens Horn. And this is written uh, by a woman called Bala Yi Egi. And I am probably saying that wrong. But uh, but uh, in English it would probably be like a troublesome band around the reindeer's horn. Uh, this is ori originally uh, written in Chinese. And the reason why I bought this is because... Um, usually the stories that we in the West hear from China, they're usually from the Han Chinese, uh, which is the majority ethnic group in China. Uh, I think about 91% of China's population are Han Chinese. However, there are also about 56 uh, recognized ethnic groups inside of mainland China. And... We very rarely hear their stories and we very rarely actually hear own voices, depictions of these groups. And this is an own voices book by a woman who belongs to the Evenki ethnic group. The Evenki are like, um, they're reindeer uh, herd, herding people uh, and they usually move between the Russian and Chinese borders. Um, so they're like basically any nomadic um, group. And this book uh, is basically like just their form of slice of life. Just talking about them taking care of the reindeers, about love and and shamanis, shamanic beliefs and all sorts of stuff. And uh, But the main reason why I bought this was because this is a rare own voices presentation. So I am really excited to actually finally hear some own voices depictions from minorities in China. I also bought the first volume in the manga, A Silent Voice, by Yoshitoki Oima. Uh, this is a, what I've heard, a little bit more of a m melancholic manga. Uh, it deals with bullying and it has a character who is deaf, so yay for disability presentation. Um, and I've also heard that this is more like uh, what we would call maybe like uh, realism, like contemporary perhaps we would say. And uh, I'm not 
I don't really read fantasy and science fiction that often, but I do kind of want to get more into manga and I thought that a contemporary tale about bullying was a little bit of a diverse cast that sounded a little bit up my alley. I also purchased Evening Primrose by Copano Maltois. This is the 2017, like just this year released, and third novel from Miss, Wa from Miss Maltois. Uh, she is perhaps best known for her debut novel, Coconut, uh, which I did a review on, on my blog. Uh, and it, I don't know how long it's going to be linked to it, but um, it serves as a source on Copano Maltois Wikipedia page. And I really liked Coconut. And I was really excited when I heard that there was that she had a new novel out. So I immediately purchased it. And it's actually very short. So I really want to actually read this in before this year is over. So this is on the top of my to-be-read pile. Uh, very much excited for this. I also got the third volume in Arab of the Future. I have read the first volume of Arab of the Future. I like it. Um, just off the bat, uh, so that people know, this is a graphic memoir about a boy who has a Syrian father and a French mother, and they grow up, uh, and he kind of grew up in different parts of the Middle East, uh, Libya and Syria and Saudi Arabia. And while I do like these the, these books, I think that they're very funny and they're very provocative in a very interesting way. These books have been marketed as like the new Mariana Satrapi, like the woman who did Purse Police and such. And I don't think that's a fair comparison. Mariana Satrapi is, despite dealing with heavy subjects, very optimistic. And these books... While not, at least what I can tell from the first volume, while these are not pessimistic books per se, they're very funny, then they're much more cynical. So I do recommend uh, that you pick these up if you think that they sound interesting, but get that whole they are like Mariana Satrapi's works out of your head. It is not a good comparison. These are much more cynical. Good, but still more cynical. Well, so much for that. I also purchased... Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Ralph from a second bookstore. This was about 20 kronas, which would translate to be... Would it be maybe like $10 there in the US? I am not entirely sure. Either way, it was very cheap. And I am always looking for romances that feature Asian males and white females. I've heard kind of mixed things about this, though. There's some people that really like this book and say that it's really thought-provoking. And then there's some that say that, that the Korean-American presentation is not great. And considering that Rainbow Rowell is, is white, yeah, that might be the case. But I still want to give this book a try. Maybe I'll be disappointed. Maybe the criticism is correct. But um, I'll still give it a try and um, hope for the best. And lastly, I purchased the memoir, the memoir, Wild, by Cheryl Strayed. This is a memoir about a woman who, after getting clean from her drug addiction and after kind of trying to get her life back on track after suffering from addiction, she went on like a road trip across America, like living in the wild. And this was just made into a motion picture and this has been getting a lot of buzz and a lot of people seem to really like it. And I am kind of, I do enjoy reading a good memoir every now and then. So hopefully this is good. So that was my October book haul. Uh, it was a lot shorter than my last one, which is great. <laughs> that was a bit of a long video. Um, what are you guys, What did you guys buy in October? What are you guys interested in reading this uh, month? Uh, comment down below. And if you like this video, click the subscribe button. Or click the like button. Both of those are good. You can 
click one on one or the other, or you can click both. It's up to you. Um, but either way, uh, I have nothing else to say, so I'll let you go.